Hi, it's Katrina. From entire amusement parks to man-made lakes, here are eight mines that have been given a new purpose. Number 8. Louisville Mega Cavern Underneath all 10 lanes of the Waterson Expressway and parts of the local zoo in Louisville, Kentucky, there's a 100-acre former limestone mine known as the Louisville Mega Cavern. It's classified as a building because of its support structures and is therefore technically the largest building in the state of Kentucky. The cavern is also the largest recycling facility in the state by tonnage. Surprise! The cavern started out as a Louisville crushed stone and remained in operation for over 42 years during the mid-20th century, from the 1930s to the 1970s. Private investors acquired the property in 1989, with the intentions of developing it into an environmentally friendly, high-security commercial storage facility. Since the early 1990s, over 850,000 truckloads of backfill have been delivered to the cavern to raise the floor levels and create roads and warehouse space. The underground cavern currently has various uses, including for business, recycling, storage, and tourism. This place features zip lines, tram tours, a dirt bike track, and an annual holiday lights display. Year-round, the facility is kept at an average temperature of 58 degrees Fahrenheit. It has two seasons, however, a wet summer and a dry winter. Luckily, the building is equipped with a dehumidifier and remains comfortable year-round. Number 7. Selena Turda Amusement Park the Salina Turda Amusement Park in Romania is located within one of the world's oldest salt mines, which dates back to the 17th century. Between then and 1932, when the mine officially closed, over 3 billion tons of salt were mined from this site, underneath Turda Transylvania, which lies 400 feet below the ground surface. Before it ultimately became an amusement park, the space also served as a World War II-era bomb shelter and a cheese warehouse. All kinds of stuff! Salina Torda features numerous attractions, including a Ferris wheel, an underground lake with row and paddle boats, ping pong, a bowling alley, an amphitheater, and mini golf courses. For visitors seeking wellness treatments, the mine also has a spa that maintains constant environmental conditions. There are also tours along with some of the old mining equipment for those seeking to learn about the historical aspect of the mine if you have time with all those activities. Admissions prices vary based on packages, but a basic adult admission is only four US dollars. Number six, Subtropolis Business Park. In 2014, this $60 million data center was opened in a former underground limestone mine in Kansas City, Missouri. It was developed by Lamar Hunt, the late owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, in collaboration with Hunt Midwest Real Estate Development. The walls of the facility are six times stronger than concrete. Thanks to the mining activity, electrical infrastructure was already in place. During hot summers, the data center takes advantage of its naturally cool subsurface environment. Subtropolis claims to be the world's largest underground storage facility, and this may very well be true, as the man-made cave occupies 55 million square feet, or around 1,100 acres. The venue has even trademarked the phrase, world's largest underground business complex. There's another underground data center in an unused 145-acre limestone mine in Butler County, Pennsylvania. It's known as the Iron Mountain National Data Center. Located 220 feet underground in a no-earthquake zone, the facility is safe from essentially every type of natural disaster and features a cafe and its own fire department. Number 5. Vilitska Salt Mine and Health Resort The 800-year-old Vilitska Salt Mine is located in southern Poland in the town of Vilitska, the same name, which is part of the Krakow metropolitan area. The mine was excavated in the 13th century and continuously produced sodium chloride or table salt until 2007. That is a really long time. As a result of falling salt prices and mine flooding, commercial salt mining was discontinued in 1996. It was one of the world's oldest operating salt mines at the time salt production ended. During World War II, the mine was occupied by the Germans and was used for manufacturing war materials. Nowadays, the Wilitzka salt mine is an official Polish historic monument. Since 1978, it has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site. At the Krakow Salt Works Museum, visitors interested in the mine's history can tour the labyrinths and shafts, as well as displays of salt mining technology. There's also an underground lake, statues carved by miners, and contemporary sculptors out of rock salt and four chapels. Even the chandelier crystals are made out of rock salt. 
The 2.2-mile visitor's route makes up just 2% of the total length of the mine passages. The mine also contains a health resort that offers a variety of subterraneous therapy services. It's located in a part of the mine that used to be a series of horse stables. According to the resort's website, the underground air has healing properties because it is unpolluted and is particularly beneficial for people with asthma, allergies, and or respiratory issues. There are a number of wellness treatments available at the center during the day, and there's also an overnight option. The temperature in the sleeping area is constantly anywhere between 55.4 and 58.1 degrees Fahrenheit, so if you decide to take a sleep there, make sure you pack warm pajamas. Number 4. Lake Orbigon Lake Orbigon is an artificial freshwater lake in Gilbert, Minnesota that was made by flooding three open pit ore mines with water. The tranquil lake is known for its crystal clear water, which looks almost tropical on an especially sunny day. The area surrounding the lake has been subject to land reclamation and now hosts beaches and docks. Lake Orbigon is known for walleye, northern pike, and trout fishing, as well as sunken attractions that can be explored via scuba diving. There's also a nearby camping area that offers simple tent sites as well as full-service RV sites with water, electric, and sewer hookups. So whether you're a camper or a glamper, this mine-turned lake is a great place to visit for some much-needed rest and relaxation. Number 3. White Mountain Publications Bookstore in the Cobalt Mining District of Northern Ontario, you can find White Mountain Publications, an independent bookstore which is also most likely the world's only bookstore that's part of an old silver mine. More than 32.5 million ounces of silver were extracted through the very same building between 1904 and 1924. Aside from being a bookstore and a publisher's office, the National Historic Site was also previously repurposed as a grocery store that used the mine shaft as a refrigerator, a wig store, a mining developer's office, and the Firefighters Museum. The bookstore is dedicated to preserving Northern Ontario's stories and history, and its location in an old mining building is therefore very fitting. White Mountain Publications began as a publishing house and has published and sold more than 270 titles since 1992. It's been open to the public since July 2014, when the company moved to their current location. There's a park across the street from the store where you can sit and enjoy your new purchase. Unfortunately, if you stop in, you won't be able to catch a glance of the bookstore's 350-foot mine shaft because it's been filled in. However, if you're a book lover who believes in supporting local businesses and you find yourself in Northern Ontario sometime, stop in and check the place out! Number 2. Creekside Mushrooms Limited Located in Worthington, Pennsylvania, Creekside Mushrooms Limited was once the world's largest mushroom facility and the nation's only underground mushroom operation. The facility was located within an old limestone mine, whose subterranean conditions proved to be ideal for growing white button mushrooms. Inside the former mine, it was always 62 degrees and moist, and because growing the mushrooms requires cool temperatures and high humidity, this was the perfect setting for the task. Additionally, white button mushrooms don't require light, so no money was lost on electricity bills, and the workers got by using flashlights and wearing hard hats with small lamps. The mushrooms grown in the clean soil at Creekside's underground facility were firmer and more nutritious than those grown above ground in peat moss. They were also certified 100% organic. Everything necessary to grow the mushrooms was produced on site, including their shipping containers and the compost that they were grown in. The sprawling 800-acre underground mushroom farm was capable of growing up to 60 million pounds of mushrooms annually and employed hundreds of locals. Unfortunately, the facility closed in 2010. Number 1. The Salt Cathedral of Sipakira This Roman Catholic church was built 200 meters below ground in the tunnels of a former salt mine near the Colombian town of Sipakira, about 49 kilometers north of Bogota. It serves as both a place of pilgrimage and a tourist destination and is considered one of the most notable achievements of Colombian architecture. I've been here and it is pretty amazing. The salt deposits were formed 250 million years ago and were elevated above sea level during the formation of the Andes Mountains. Today, the mine site sits at an altitude of 8,701 feet. Since the 5th century BC, the halite mines were exploited. Around 1932, mine workers built a sanctuary on the site that the church was eventually located on. 
Every day before starting work, they prayed here. Construction of the original Salt Cathedral began in 1950, and it was officially inaugurated on August 15, 1954. Due to safety concerns and structural problems that came along with being located within an active mine, the cathedral was closed by authorities in September of 1992. Construction on a new cathedral had already started the previous year, 200 feet below the old one. It was officially inaugurated on December 16, 1995. As many as 3,000 people visit the church every Sunday for religious services. It lacks a bishop, however, and is therefore not considered an official Catholic cathedral. The cathedral is part of a larger complex called Parque de la Sal, or the Salt Park, a 79-acre property featuring artwork, geological displays, depictions of the mining process, and educational displays about sustainable development and environmentally friendly mining. Thanks for watching! Have you ever visited any of these places? Let me know in the comments below and share your travels with me on Instagram at Katrina Explained. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!